the year of 2017 came, and 2017 came, and then when it came time for the W choose, dude did some little funny business and wrote me out of W two for not the amount that I had got paid. So mm-hmm. let's just say my salary for 2017 was like 72,000. And then he gave me uh 1099 or W two for like 46, 47,000. Mm-hmm. And that kind of pissed me off because like, you know, you didn't put down that you took out a certain amount of taxes. So that would have had me liable uh, it sound like your sound like your Bluetooth just went off. Hold on one second. Hold on. I just started my truck up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You there? Yeah, okay. there you go. Okay, so, yeah, I got you. Uh huh. What he did, what when he did that, caused me to you know have to pay more taxes because he reported that I only paid a certain amount of taxes when I had actually paid more than that. Right. So he tried to come up with some story. I had to, you know, go through the IRS and, and report to the IRS that there was this, you know, what I thought was suspicious activity by him. Mm-hmm. It, it was a whole big thing. And uh, so it kind of pissed me off. Is that, hey, when you know, when you play with my money, I'm going to show you, like I said, I'm going to show you that I could do this job. I could do it better than you. And I can make my own money. Right. So I went on ahead and got my authority. And uh, got my first truck. I bought it out of uh, Olive Branch, Mississippi. And there still you go got it. There. No, we had to junk it, but I'm in a new one. Oh, okay. So you still got. <laughs> yeah. So the company that you that you that you're driving for now, because you said you want to uh, mm-hmm. you 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 want to shop you know shop them out. Uh, the company that you drive for yeah. now, you're you're leased on to them with your own truck, right? Right. So how this all came about was I got divorced uh, a couple of years ago. Whoa. Divo- what, whoa. Div- you what? Wait a minute. Was you married at the time of the of, of the of the crash? I've been married since I was a seventeen year old girl. Oh, so you was so how did your how did your uh, husband uh, feel? Uh, how was your husband doing all of this or all of that? Thought he was going, thought he was entitled to half of it. Oh, okay. That yeah. sounds that sounds like a whole nother story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's just say when 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 money is coming about, it has a habit of changing people. Yes, yes, it do. People's intentions, people's thoughts, people's motivation, and people's affections towards you change great. When my crash happened. All of a sudden, it was like I had no husband. Wow. Um, he did not want to come to Texas and be there uh, with me through it. And he was like, well, you could come home. But he wasn't um, wanting to, to, to take care of me. Like, let's just say that's how, hey, what the hell? That's how I discovered there was other people involved in the relationship besides me. You know, when when you have to come home and spend time, when you're on the road, you don't know things. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so he was developed into something that I didn't know and was only thinking about himself and not about me or us. And so when it started to come time for the settlement, he felt like he was entitled to half. And I was like, uh, no, you're not had entitled to nothing because you I was the one out there on the road that... And plus, you was not there. Hey, keep in mind, there's long right, and plus, there's long term medical bills that I have to put money to the side for because I will end up having to have knee surgery. I'll have to have a full knee replacement, you know. And at some point, I may have to have additional rotator cuff surgery or hip replacement surgery due to the injuries. Wow! It's all that money, I, I've got it locked locked away, half of it locked away. Um, so that I can't even touch it for like 20 years, you know, in the event. Um, but yeah, he, he, uh, so his way to get back at me, um, was when I purchased, like I said, when I went and got my authority in 2017, mm-hmm. I went and bought a, a used truck, 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, we did finance it in his name because mm-hmm. he had the better credit. Okay. So to get even with me when a divorce came, he his way of trying to hurt me was to try to hurt me financially. By, and by we had just truck. started to... Right, by taking the truck. And so that's what he did. He called the people and said, hey, I don't drive. I don't have a class A. Uh, we're splitting up, and I want this truck gone. Wow. And so they came. They spoke with me. They let me get all my stuff and everything out of it. And I was like, okay, so this is how you're trying to do. And I was like, God don't like ugly because you have to realize I'm a truck driver. It don't matter if I'm an owner, operator, or company driver. Somebody hired me in five minutes, and they say I had a job. And I made some good money. So for what, what did I do? 18 months, 16, no, 15 months. Mm -hmm. I worked real hard as a company driver. And for my, as coronavirus started getting up and getting crazy and it was quarantining people, um, the job started laying off like reverse seniority, laying off people um, Mm -hmm. so they could keep the seniors with a full schedule. And I was like, you know what? When I used to work in the airline industry, um, I went through the merger and with the merger, they did reverse seniority, lay off the new people for the seniors, you know, to keep the seniors. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not going to go through that again. I'm going back out there on the road. And so since I didn't have enough money to, that I wanted to spend to buy another truck, I was trying to be smart with a lease because you can be an owner operator, have your own authority. And what a lot of people don't know, yeah, you can make some good money, but there's so much that goes to it. There's, you know, you got to look at the factoring and then what happens when people don't pay your bills, you got to pay the factoring company. You ain't getting all of that, you know? Uh, when your truck breaks down, every expense is coming out of your pocket. So my thing was, I just want to lease a truck for a little bit um, and not own it outright until I save up enough money to go buy my own truck. You know, and, and, and what I was going to do was put some drivers in the truck and stay home. And researching and researching and researching, um, I couldn't find anybody that I really liked. So I said, well, forget it. I'm going to go back to U.S. Express. I'm a lease owner to be one of the lease drivers. Yes. Yes. Um, while we were there doing the orientation, was trying to pull an okie doke on the, the potential lease operators. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of said, hey, you guys, before you be quick to run into a lease contract, because they were, and, and that's something that a lot of people don't understand. Companies that do lease, you get, that do lease, the lease purchase, and then, you know, straight out owner operators. There's some companies that's out there that's designed to rip off the driver. I e. and not help US the Express. <laughs> they yeah, and, and they now they have they hope you dumb and desperate. That I'm gonna use that. Companies want you to be dumb and desperate and don't have no knowledge. Okay, that's, let's establish that off front. They mm. they they want you to be so bad that you hunt for money that you turn a blind eye to everything else. And I was the one person who really analyzed everything. So you got these drivers, they hungry for money. Come on, let's get there. Let's, hey, what truck we get? Okay, the truck look good. Uh, it's, it's sounding good. They don't let you test drive the truck. You just get to, you know, kind of pre-trip it. But that's mm-hmm. all you get to do. And being that I did work for U.S. Express, I already know their system and, you know, how they handle stuff. So we were sitting there, it was like, hey, you know, who's paying for me? The truck break down. Are the trucks still under warranty? If the truck has to be repaired, do we have to bring it back to you guys exclusively? Or we did take it to any shop? Who's, you know, like I said, who's just simple, it should be general knowledge question. Who's paying for everything? Or if, if we, if our truck break down, we don't have enough money, do you guys have a maintenance account, you know, that's going to help pay for this? Or are you guys helping us with money and then, you know, take it out of our checks portion by portion? Uh, what kind, you know, what kind of warranty are you guys offering? And then, you know, like, and then some payroll questions. And so they couldn't answer those questions. And it was like, oh, uh, you know, you, eventually after I pushed it, they was like, you guys are taking care of everything. So I started telling the other driver, hey, y'all better pay attention to the questions that I'm asking and the answers they're giving you. Mm. So then they give us like a, you know, company, some companies will give you a mock paycheck of what another driver made. Mm-hmm. A lot of times they will show you what the highest paid driver is making exactly. and what the lowest paid driver, you know, 
And I tell the people, pay attention when it's jo- when the job say, uh, if they say a dollar a mile or it say up to a dollar a mile, that up to don't mean you're going to come in at that amount. You're coming in at something lower, and eventually you might work your way up to that amount. Mm-hmm. So I had a dedicated account with FedEx, with U.S. Express, doing. Uh-oh. Hello? Because the FedEx directly. Hello? Um, I kind of I kind of lost you here for a minute. Twenty five per mile. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm back. I'm back. I I kind of lost you there for a minute. All right, go ahead. You said a dollar a mile. Okay. It, it was a dollar twenty five on the dedicated account. You know, dollar um, twenty five a mile. So I was like, okay, cool. So in looking in this little packet that they were trying to hand out to drivers, oh, well, if if you drive for U.S. Express, your your truck payments and insurance is a fixed rate. Um, you'll pay a flat out six fifty per week, depending on what year your truck is. It could be more, more, maybe a little less, but ballpark it at six fifty a week. Um, you know, three years you should own a truck out, and then they give you an example. This driver is our driver. He's making this kind of amount of money. This it's- driver right here has got his own truck. He's making this kind of money, but the money was lower than what their lease driver was making. So let me ask you this. Did you uh-huh. was it was was you getting paid more, less, or the same, even if you still came in with your authority? They was trying to make it seem that if you came in with your own truck and your own stuff, that you was gonna be making less than what their lease drivers were. But the and I, I knew that wasn't true, first of all. They feeding you all they low. What I noticed, what nobody else noticed, was in the midst of looking how they had, you know, when you get your pay your driver settlement. All the loads you booked, the miles you ran, what that load paid out, what your percentage is or whatever your mileage is. Um, and then at the bottom, your fixed cost and then what your net pay. Mixed in with what the load pays was, was a little bitty sentence in super tiny writing, lease miles on the truck. So not only are you paying for the truck, you know, your fixed rate, your truck payment, your insurance. Let's just call that a fixed rate, right? Mm-hmm. They were charging you for the miles that you drove on that truck as, as well. So basically, basically, and they weren't telling nobody that. And they had it in some little bitty writing. They made it look like it was money being added in because they put it in the wrong category. So it looked like this is loads that you, you, you drove, the loads you're making, but right in the little fine line in between the loads is, is, is a deduction for least miles driven on that truck that you got. And I caught that. And this is and this so is what like, and this is what US, US back when, right? Back this when just last year, last year, oh, May, okay. and, May, like May and June of last year. So your suggestion, as a matter of fact, I was there. That's what they were doing. I was there on my fiftieth birthday. So your <laughs> your suggestion, <Last> your <laughs> suggestion, at least coming with U.S. Express, is to read and pay attention to everything. Every single thing. And when I tell you they had it so it was barely visible and faded out. So I'm like, how are you paying a lease payment and then you're going to charge for lease mileage as well? So you're making two payments. It, it was something like, double depending dipping. on what type of truck a year, but yeah, double dipping, between two to four cents per mile. So they were so bent that I said, and then they, were, they couldn't handle the fact that I was already a motor carrier. They wanted to know who my customer base was. They wanted a list of all my customers. They wanted to know my, my history with, um, with, um, with, with, uh, the clearing house. They nah, tried so to they, find everything nah, they could do to nah, disqualify so they, me. No, nah, so they can, no, nah, they, they wanted it, all your customers. So it won't be no conflict that's, of that's interest. What I was saying. No conflict of interest. Right. Mm. So they couldn't find anything to, to knock me out to say that I'm not qualified. So in the end, what they did was they came back and said, they held me back. After everybody was getting their loads, it was me and two other drivers, a Mexican guy and another black guy, that hadn't got the clearance to go pick out trucks yet. Mm-hmm. In the end, they came back and told both of us, me and the Mexican guy, that we didn't pass our drug test. <laughs> they told the Mexican guy he pissed dirty. And they t- I said, I ain't pissed dirty. That's bullshit. Oh, well, it's in your hair. They had the doctor call me. Or whoever it was a drug company. Oh, they did uh, a have hair. Have you taken they, anything? They did a hair yeah, follicle they test do hair, on you. Right, they do piss and hair follicle right there mm-hmm. when when you they're doing orientation. 
Um, your piss is clean, but it, it's showing in your hair follicles that maybe you took some hydrocodone. Did you take some cough syrup medicine? Now, this is, this is, this is May. And it was like first week of June. In January, I had pneumonia. Okay. And so I was in the hospital, I had it. So they tried to disqualify me on that. So I lit them up. I called the clearinghouse. I was, because if you put that on my record, you just don't know. I come with the truck and the attorney as well. Exactly. So, um, I, I mean, every, for every obstacle they threw, I had a response and an answer and I had a documentation for it. So in the end, they decided they didn't want to hire me. Oh, we, we hired someone that was more qualified. Cause what? when they realized that I had, I was contacting my attorney right then and there. Um, yeah. <laughs> so more, they, they were like, more oh, well, qualified. we didn't hire you. Qu- more qualified right, than right. you. I mean, 20, uh-huh, you exactly. you you already been in the game since two thousand and nine, and you it, and in and in twenty nine what last year? So in twenty twenty, damn near, damn near nineteen yeah. nine, damn near nineteen seventeen, uh, umpteen years, nine years, not uh, yeah. damn near nine years. You gonna turn around and tell somebody me you found somebody more qualified than me? Are you kidding? They sent me a certified letter saying that, and the whole, and they sent me my entire employment packet and drugs. Now, for people who don't know, when somebody say you got a piss test that came back dirty or a hair follicle test that came back dirty, challenge it and make them retest it because the company that's providing the test, i.e., U.S. Express, is supposed to retest it per your, if it came back dirty or if, uh, any possibility. They have to pay for a retest. And they didn't want to do that because they knew I had them dead to right. So I was like, you know what? That's okay. God closed one door. He's going to open another one. And I, I stayed home for about five days depressed. Mm-hmm. I cried. I prayed. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know what? Get back out there. But it's going to be somebody else. It's going to be better. So, um, you know, and I, I wanted to have a good truck. So I was like researching lease purchase companies. The top paying ones and the best paying ones, and there was a category that came up, and the company that I leased on with Road Legends, they popped up, and um, when I started looking at their information, I was just in awe at what I read, and I was just like, "There's, there's no way. That's that's too good to be true." I just so talked. I, 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 just, I, I just made. I, I just did a made a. Uh, well, actually, I just talked to them. This week, and it it will be part of the it will be part of the make the call series road legends. I just talked to him, and and we and did. yeah, okay. the uh the 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 young lady uh that I talked with probably you might have been the same. Well, yeah, I I talked to a girl. Well, you you talked to a guy. Yeah, because they don't have no female recruiters. Well, I, did she speak English or did she sound like she had an accent? I she had an accent. I believe. Okay. So, oh. yeah. I, uh, well, I'm, I'm hoping this is the right road legend. Well, you know what? <laughs> you know what? I talked to so many. I, I talked to so many drivers and so many companies this past week. It's crazy. Uh-huh. But it, I, you know, when I when I go back and and dump my um, you know, dump my SCSI card and put everything in the computer so I can edit it. I'll, I will find out, but if I'm not mistaken, I I know I talked to a woman about road legends, mm-hmm. and they yeah, they they, they was one, uh one they was pretty that's a recruiter. yeah they they was pretty they was pretty good with, with the information that uh that they was they given provided. that they provided. Mm-hmm. So so road legends. Now I'm gonna tell you, road legends is the deal is the real deal mm-hmm. because how, let me just put it out there like that. What company? That's bringing in drivers as the lease drivers have a maintenance program. With Road Legends, you get your truck as long as your truck is under lease. They're making the payment. They're making the maintenance repairs for you. You pay a hundred dollar deductible, so you do like a, a, a maintenance uh, escort account. It's two thousand um, dollars. You pay that in the, like your first few paychecks. So, so you, you put two thousand dollars aside. As like is is maintenance insurance, I think is the term that they use for it. So when your truck breakdowns, got to go into the shop, you pay a hundred dollar deductible towards the cost of your repairs, just like your car insurance. Your car your car get an accident, you have a deductible you got to pay out of pocket. So that your two thousand dollar escort uh, account covers, they'll pull a hundred dollars from it for each repair that you get. 
they pay for everything else. Anytime your truck got to go to the shop, they pay for it. You pay $100 deductible. Mm. Bingo, green light, that's a seller right there. Your tires, and that covers the whole truck, bumper to bumper, including your tires. Normal wear and tear, your tires go out, they replace your tires. Now, if you do something and you bust a tire because you did something silly, then you that, that expense come out of your pocket. But if it's normal wear and tear, when your tires need replacing, they replace your tires. Road legends. No other company is out there doing that. And I was like, man, this is the support that I was looking for. You know, the expenses that if something happens, you know, um, my truck break down and you may not always have the money to pay for it to get fixed. But guess what? They're supporting you. They're paying for it to make, and, and if your truck breaks down, they got a loan of truck, they're putting you in a loan of truck so you keep running so your truck come back out the shop. They got, they, Ain't nobody else doing that. They they got you, how, how they paying you, percentage or, or mileage? We get we get paid 75% um, off the top of the load. Whatever the rate count is, we get 75%. If you get uh, layover pay, detention pay, tonu pay, they get, they get, you get 75%, they get a 25%. Whatever you get made, they get a cut up. Wow. Um, but like I said, there's nobody else out there doing this. And when these people bring you in, they're very selective about who they bring in. They will turn down the driver they'll, in a heartbeat if they think you ain't what they're looking for. Exactly. The drivers that come to this company have come and stayed. I've, since I've been there, they've only terminated one contract on one driver. Mm. Most drivers come and they stay long term. Um, I've never been to a trucking company where not only the white guy, the Mexican guy, but the black guy is happy and and, and saying good things and, and excited about how much money they make. All right. Road That's legends. Road. And I was like, this is where you need to come to. This is the company to be with. And they, you know, they're very caring, very personable. They the object is for you to succeed. They're trying to make sure that you get out there, you make money, because if you make money, then they make money. If you ain't making money and you ain't happy, then they know they're not going to get no money and they're not going to be happy. And so they, they want you to be happy, get what you want, make the money you need to make, and then they get 25% of that. Well, you know, make sure you, uh, at, you know, after we hang up, make sure you text me your, you know, what, what uh, they... Um the company information so I could put it in the description and I could put, uh, -huh. uh, you know, you have a driver code or something like that or referral code or, you know, or just for them to just mention your name so you can get credit for, you know, somebody right. that might be interested in going over the road legends, man. And I'm trying to start my own fleet. I'm, I'm looking for fleet drivers to come drive for me. Well, I'm, I'm putting them in, in, in trucks. That's what's up, uh, man. That's that's what's up. And using Road Legends yeah. as that as that conduit, mm -hmm. man. Listen, right, right. Tanya. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something else. Okay. A lot of these companies, you go out here and run three, four thousand miles, and you ain't coming home with a thousand, but a thousand. You know, with your payment, mm -hmm. you ain't coming home with a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred a week if you make that. One of the drivers that I kept in touch with at U.S. Express is like, I ain't seen a fifteen hundred dollar paycheck yet. And I'm putting in 3,000 miles a week. Yeah, not at U.S. If you can't right. make, right, if you can't make six to $8,000 a, a week gross, and, and some of these drivers over there is grossing more than that, I'm slightly disabled. I, me, myself, I try not to run more than 2,000 miles a week. If you get 2,500 miles a week out of me, consider yourself lucky. I'm still grossing. 6,000 on average. Now, if I got a week, I feel like I'm a fuck up and, you know, my body is hurting and I can't run, I'll make sure I pull one load that's at least three that'll cover my fixed expenses and I'll still walk home with a paycheck, you know, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar paycheck. Now, mind you, um, this, now, mind you, the truck you're in is yours, right? Not roll, uh, not, not roll. Ma no, I, 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 I got the truck through Roll Legends. Oh, you, oh, three year contract. Mm -hmm. Three-year contract, uh, descending paycheck stuff. So you come in, the, the truck payment, I have a 2019. My 2019 had 265,000 miles on it when I got it. Mm -hmm. Still under manufacturer warranty. And usually when it, when, it, when it needs to have any repairs, I've had the engine completely rebuilt and a brand spanking new transmission put in already on this truck to the tune of some $37,000. Guess how much money I paid? Uh, 
Auto- $100. Uh, automatic or manual? I'm in the automatic. I can no longer drive manual transmissions because of my injuries. I got you. I got you. But if anybody that you got coming in up under you to run on your fleet, you can get them either automatic or manual if they choose to have one. Right. And I'm for me, myself, I'm hoping to get one of the 2020s and 2019 trucks. I know I have a, uh, there's a driver that's coming out of a, because we're getting in all brand new 2022s right now. Mm-hmm. So there is a flatbed driver that is wanting to come out of his 2022. And he's going into a 2019 manual transmission. Okay, that's so what's up. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they'll give me that 2022 so I can put a driver in it. Well, I'll tell you but what. When, I, when it, oh, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, when, when, if, if you're coming in to get a job, they're trying to put you in a brand spanking new truck because they want you to buy these trucks. So uh, the newer trucks, the 2022s, they, the 2022s are coming with APU. Mm-hmm. Um, they're on a five-year payment, and the 2019—I don't even know if it's an—it's it's, it's a few 2019s, a, two, a few 2020s left, and I think a few 2021. So as drivers are upgrading into new trucks, because some drivers they're just leasing it so they can run as an owner operator without owning the truck outright. Me, I'm trying to own mine outright. Especially now that I got new new motor and new trans. Um, okay. My truck, I got two years left to pay it, and you get title in hand. Title in hand. That's what's up, so, man. Well, yeah, and no, no bullshit about, you know, oh, bubble payment this or him hog. Mm-mm. At the end of your lease, you got your title. So, Tanya, you're you you, you you're looking for good drivers out there. She's looking for good drivers. So make sure you uh, leave me, you know, either text it to me or, or email it to me, the information that uh, that uh, that you want the people to call so they can reach out to you. And, and hopefully uh-huh. they'll be good enough to, you know, jump on and, and run one of those uh, good trucks for you. Tanya, thank yeah. you very much for coming on. Beautiful, blessed, diva lady trucker that went through a whole bunch of adversities, but still here on top, man. You you are a you you you're some kind of story, man. Thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Just to, you know, maybe I I hope to reach someone and just inspire them to don't be afraid. You you get into an accident, but don't be afraid. Take the time to be humble. Take the time to love the next person. We all truckers. We all out here trying to. It don't matter what your race is, what religion you are. There's a lot of right and the left leaning and a lot of ugly politics out here in trucking. But you know what? At the end of the day, we still doing the same damn job. Exactly. Love each other. Watch out for each other. Have each other's back because you will want somebody to do the same thing for you. You can also catch you this. Your money. You can also catch this young lady on TikTok up under Diva Diva Trucker, right? I will put the well. I will see if I can put the link uh, to your TikTok in the in the description. But man, awesome conversation, and that's and and that's what I do over here uh, at the mm-hmm. Lockout Man Podcast Show. We. We we sit down and have engaging conversations with these with these beautiful drivers, you know. Just it. just to learn just just to learn your stories and all like that with 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 no drama, you know. The people that came the people that came on here before you, you know what I'm saying? You know, we still have uh we still have good engagement for the people that broke off that's no longer with me. You know, y'all still cool in yourselves, but meeting new people like like yourself, Diva Trucker, is is a blessing to me. So I'm just I'm just happy that I'm still here to give this platform uh to give this platform to people, you know, that wanna that that just wanna you know, just have a good conversation with me. And that's and that's what it's that's what it's all about. And again, this right here has been a total, total awesome experience for me. So oh, thank you for you, saying that. That's I, I wanna I wanna shout out uh another female trucker 
that you sound just like her and she uh-huh. went she went through not as much adversities as you but she had her issues and her name is uh Red Duchess Trucker. Um, oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah, she uh y'all two sound just alike. I almost I almost <laughs> I almost got lost in thought. Like, am I talking to Red Duchess? <laughs> because she, oh my she was in the military. Oh my God, she, she, she's a military vet. Okay, uh, okay. She's a military vet. She had her adversities, and mm-hmm. you know, just listening to y'all. I mean, just listening to you. I, like I said, I almost. I'm like, damn, am I talking to Red Duchess? No, 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 no. This this is Diva Trucker. So definitely I will what I'll do I, I love that name too, Red Duchess. What I'll do from our from our call, I'll send you uh-huh. the link to her interview so you can uh Okay. So you can watch it. Yes, man. most definitely. So you can watch yeah, it. Yeah, we gotta be out here supporting. It's uh like I said, I you know, like I said, I thank you very much, man. So, all right. Well, everybody. And Diva, you know, if you see me, I cook. <laughs> I, that, yeah, that's what's up. I'm. Uh, hey, I'm with that. I'm. 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 I'm with that, man. I'm with. I'm with the cooking. Um, Diva Trucker, thank you very much. You are a citizen. So, whenever, ever, 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 you want to come back on to the show. Or reach out uh-huh. to me or whatever. You got the number. You got the email. You got the you got the medias. Reach out to yes, me sir. and we yes, will sir. do it again. No problem. No problem. We will I definitely do it Thank again. Thank you. You go out there and be blessed. Keep trucking. Stay safe. Mm-hmm. And uh, keep spreading the word so everybody know that the beautiful podcast, man. I just loved it. Thank you. I'm gonna be looking for Miss Red Duchess so I can listen to hers. But it, it's nice to know that somebody's out here talking to truckers about trucking. Thank uh, you. It's, it's awesome. So thank you for considering having conversation with. Me. Not a problem. That's what I. That's what I like to do. I mean, you know, I come across. Uh, now, now I, I I gotta I gotta get y'all on TikTok because y'all not messing with YouTube no more, man. I mean. Where where y'all? I don't know how to where, do the YouTube thing. Where y'all That's come? the only reason why I haven't been out there. Uh-uh. I don't know how to do it. No, don't no, don't don't mess with YouTube, man. You good. <laughs> you, <laughs> you good. Where, that, where that's y'all how all these other beautiful diva truckers is, is putting stuff out there. Like I said, they merchandising and they they. I didn't know how to do all of that. I, I all I knew is I had time to get out here and drive and make the money. That's what I'm but saying. The, where the y'all? Kids are showing me how to TikTok. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Where y'all coming from? Like. Yo, I mean, it's like an explosion of female drivers all over TikTok right now. Is it's crazy, but um, but yeah, that's that's <laughs> why I've been out there for a long time driving. They we're, we're safe drivers. We get the job done. We get there on time, and we ain't out there running around with with, with egos having pissing contests up and down the highway with with other truckers. We you know. Oh, I, you can't pass me and all of this kind of stuff. And, oh, well, my truck better than your truck. We ain't got time for you. Why y'all over there bumping the guns? We out here trying to make money. That's what's up. That's what's up. Diva Trucker, Tanya, thank you very much again. Um, you stay safe out there. Make sure you get that truck fits. Um, soon as I uh, soon as I get to my terminal and all like that, I'll send a, I'll send a link over to you so you can go ahead and uh, okay. go ahead and uh peep her out make sure you subscribe to the lockout men podcast show on uh youtube guys on instagram on uh tiktok i am all over if you guys want to come on and talk to me and have a beautiful conversation like me and uh diva trucker just had don't be afraid you know i I reached out to a few of you guys and i don't want to talk but y'all talking like crazy (laughs) on on tiktok though but y'all don't want to talk. <laughs> what will we talk about? What we what will we mm-hmm. talk? What we'll talk about? What you was? We'll talk about what you was talking about on TikTok. You know, right? <laughs> I don't, hey, you I, know what? I don't want to talk. One day we'll have. 
one day we'll have to do a topic about uh uh what's what's a good way to say it? You know, like I put contact out there. Man, the folks be coming at me hard. They be mad. Uh, mad. You, uh, you I got a video. About, you you talking about the cra- <laughs> you you talking about the crazy people in the comments and all like that. You you know TikTok. Mm-hmm. You know, like you know, I I got my I I got my handful of haters too. You know, because it is what it is. But TikTok, man. I mean, you just I I don't know what it is for TikTok, but you know, you got a lot of kids that's that's on that app and. You got a lot of kids that that actually comes in and comments about shit that they don't know nothing about. So, mm-hmm. you know, they just the want white it. folks coming at you with violence. They, 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 they. The white men, the white truckers, and some of them not even truckers. They, they, they want to. Like I posted a video about a dude I caught walking around with bolt cutters. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Trailers. I've seen that. Yeah. Man, the, them folks is threatening me, talking about they gonna hurt me when they see me. All in my inbox, making comments. <sighs> I, I didn't give, I didn't give in to them, but no, yeah, they, yeah, don't worry about it. Just lose and if mind. you and and if you could, Tanya, you 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 got the pictures on you now. Can you send them? Yeah, I'm texting them as we speak. Thank you, ma'am. And I will put, I'll put that in, I'll put that in a collage, so that. God damn, that's why I hate coming down through here through 80, man. All these uh, it was troopers. At? Troopers. Like, bro. I, I, I just passed your brother, bro. Bro, <laughs> I just passed your brother, man. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So go ahead and send all that over to me, man. Again, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. You stay safe out there. And you got my number. Call me anytime you want. I'm always no problem, here. Dear. You take care. It's awesome. I'm glad to meet you and over the phone at least and talk to you and uh, check your phone because them pictures just came through. All right. Well, I can't check them now because right. I'm driving, but I'll check them out when I get right, uh, right, right. when I get to my terminal. All right. You have a good one and you be safe. And like I say, God bless. Yes, ma'am. God bless keep to you too. It, keep doing the good thing and keep fighting the good fight out there for us. I am. I am. Stay blessed, ma'am. Take care. Bye-bye.